Hey guys, Megan here. Uh, I'm here today to do a review uh, for Gone Girl by Gillian Flynn. Um, I do not have the book with me, so here, here, there. That's what it looks like, in case you don't know. It's a very popular book. It's been everywhere. Um, well, that's partly due to the movie that just came out starring Ben Affleck and Rosamund Pike, which I have not seen. Uh, after reading this book, I decided I didn't want to see it anymore, which might tell you already my opinion of it, but hear me out. Okay, I'm going to try to do a spoiler-free section here, just, just now. Okay, basic plot. Um, Amy Dunn disappears on her and her husband Nick's five-year wedding anniversary, and there's all these questions um, about where she went and how she could have just simply disappeared like that. It's just so not like her. Uh, Nick is, obviously, they always look at the husband first, which is pretty routine, um, but he immediately shoots up uh, through a series of, like, you know, what appears to be um, implicating behavior. He shoots up to the top of the uh, suspect list. And um, so they think he did it. And, and you, the point is, and you, if you've heard anything about this, you'll know that this whole novel is just a series of plot twists and turns it just sh goes to show that it can a plot of a book can go off in a million directions. Like so, as quick as I'm reading it, my mind's immediately coming up with all these other um, possibilities of um, what happened and what could happen, who did what, who could be what, or who could be who. <laughs> and um, so I found it fascinating. It immediately drew me in, just as a lot of people promised it would. Um, I read it in like, I think two or three days. I just could not put it down because I had to know what happened. I just, I blew through it. Um, and it kept me on hold, like right up until about, uh, two thirds of the way through, um, when some stuff became apparent and I started to lose interest because I sort of started to see the outcome. But in the end, I still was surprised and did not completely fully expect the outcome. So, uh, we'll leave it at that. Um, I totally agree with what a lot of people say that the less you know about this story, the better, because you want to keep yourself in suspense as long as possible. So yeah, um, that is the end of the spoiler free section. Now I'm just going to get into the main discussing of it. So bye spoiler free section, <laughs> as Christine from Poland and Banana Books would say. Okay. So let's launch into this thing. Um, okay. Uh, to begin with. The amount of suspicion that was placed on Nick was so insane, I started to doubt, like, fairly quickly that he had done it, because that would just be way too easy. Like, way too easy. Obviously more complicated than that. My biggest problem was, of course, the blood. How could she have faked her own death with that amount of blood on the floor? especially with the whole, like, blood fainting thing. But then it just all became so perfect. Everything, like, down to the final detail. Just everything. Amy, like, it's like she's the most smartest person in the world. Like, the biggest foreseer of anything and everything. Like, you have to give her credit for being brilliant in that aspect. In terms of her being a psycho, well, I... I believe that she was just too perfect too perfect to be believed, to be believable. Um, I found the quiz motif very interesting. The fact that they kept popping up over in the book, um, like in um, the books, Amy's Diary, Amy's Job, her whole life is a series of quizzes. And for some reason, um, they all seem to be answer C. And I wondered that. And on Goodreads, I got an opportunity to ask Gillian Flynn a question. And I asked her why it seemed to be that Amy's answers were always C. Is it because, like, you know, in magazines, we usually come to find that the answer is C. Like, there's always a third option, you know, between after, after A and B, which are, like, the most obvious or something. Um, I never got an answer on from her on that. But that's just my um, interpretation of it always being answer C. And... The, the book itself could be interpreted as a quiz of what happened to Amy. Like, A, she ran away. B, he killed her. C, somebody else killed her. Or D, she killed herself. And it turned out to be, well, actually it turned out to be A, she ran away. But still, I, I, I thought that, you know, the whole book could be that. And I thought the whole um, psychologist angle, the fact that her and her parents are psychologists, 
was so perfect, really. Like, it was interesting. Um, because as a result of Nick feeling so anxious about being, like, um, analyzed or, like, looked at as the only suspect, he gets so anxious about everything that he, um, his behaviors turn in him into a guilty person. Like, um, it's a hard time trying to act hopeful and, you know, not appear suspicious without looking suspicious. So it's one of those things about crime and stuff that, like, you know, but that's just getting off topic of the book. Okay. Um, yeah, I did, I had no idea where to go. I, my mind went, like I said, in a million different directions while reading it, thinking, okay, she did this, he did this, like, this might have happened, or this might have happened, and you could only find out by continuing to read. And that was interesting. Um, I love books that are like that, to a point. Um, I like being able to guess sometimes, but this one, you just kept me guessing, and I think that was uh, Gillian Flynn's um, uh, objective. And it worked. It, it totally worked. She kept me hooked and guessing right up to the end. Or I think when when I picked up that halfway through that Amy was still alive, I was like, oh, here we go. And I didn't realize how much the affair was a part, like the fact that it was the whole reason for this whole charade. Um, it, as like stuff kept happening, I'm like, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, I see that. I see where that came from and everything. Yeah. Um, it got to the end and I realized I did not like any of them. I wasn't rooting for anybody. I just wanted it to end because I was so depressed and like so done with the characters because I, I, I didn't like any of them. I wasn't rooting for any of them. I wasn't hopeful. Like at first I was on, when I found out that Nick had an affair, I was on, automatically on Amy's side. I was never really on Nick's side. I just didn't want him to die for her murder when he didn't do it. I still don't like him. I don't like any of them. And when I realized that it was going to come to the end, down to the end where they would have to live together and live with each other, it seemed sort of fitting given the kind of characters that they are, like the kind of people they are. It seemed kind of fitting. And it, at first I, I hated it. But then I thought there's a lot of old movies that where like, the ending happens, and it, and you go, that's it? That is what their lives are going to be? Like, for the rest of their lives, they are going to be miserable people stuck together, um, or, like, or they're going to die together. Like, a lo it happens a lot in old movies that I've seen, and so then I was like, oh, yeah, that's true. That does happen before. And you rarely see that in fiction anymore. Usually at least one of the characters has a happy ending of some sort, or at least a hopeful ending. In this case, it really looks dire. Like, they are going to be miserable together, but pretend to be happy for the rest of their lives. I mean, the one gleaming hope, I guess, would be their child, but at the same time, that child has been born under a bed of lies, and so I automatically feel sorry for the child. This book, I gave four out of five stars on Goodreads. Um, I, mean, I didn't demand a happy ending. I just wanted some sort of like resolution that was different. Um, I may, it's easy, it's really easy to say that they deserve each other, and so that's just what, the way we're going to leave them. But I just, I did not leave feeling satisfied. So that is my take on uh, Gone Girl by Gillian Flynn. Um, I cannot say whether or not I think you should read it. If you are looking for a thriller that keeps you guessing, pick it up. But if not, I don't know. I, I didn't want to see the movie because I, I already know what happens and I didn't really see any benefit into comparing the two because I've kind of lost interest and have moved on. I'm sorry. I know this is a bleak review, but I just wanted to get this out and sort of vent on stuff that I was thinking about. Anyway, if you stuck with me so far, <laughs> this far, thank you so much. Um, if you agree or disagree, either way, I don't care. Please leave a comment. I would love to discuss. Um, thank you so much for watching. Um, if you like this, please like and subscribe. And I will see you next time. Have a great day, guys.